We've gathered here in the protective shelter of God's healing love to remember and celebrate the life of Darlene V. Griffith and to honor the memories of her that we carry in our minds and in our hearts. Darlene's journey in this world came to its close on Wednesday, February 22nd. She passed peacefully in her home where she was lovingly cared for by her family. She was 83 years old. My name is Audrey, and I serve as a spiritual counselor for the hospice team. And it's been our privilege to be entrusted with care and support for Darlene, for you, her loved ones, uh, as together you made the journey toward this day. And on behalf of Hospice of Central PA, I extend our sympathy and condolences to you who knew Darlene best and loved her. I understand that there are some neighbors and friends from a long time ago that have come to support the family today and remember Darlene. In this time together, we're free to acknowledge the feelings in our hearts and to know that God cares. We're here to comfort and support each other in this time of loss. This is a time for sharing memories of life with Darlene and thanking God for her life. A time to hear God's word of hope that can speak to our lives and move us to celebrate the strength and comfort that we discover in God's love and care. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 begins with these words. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die a time to plant, and a time to harvest. Yes, there is a time for every matter under heaven. Each one of us knows our time of flourishing, and each of us faces that time of fading, journey, journeying toward the moment of death. And on days like today, we can be comforted by the knowledge that through Jesus Christ, God walks with us at all times even and especially as we journey in the valley of the shadow of death. God walked with Darlene throughout her life, through joys, through challenges, through in-between times. In days of strength, she worked hard, and I believe she probably played hard too. She loved and enjoyed her family and friends. The seasons change as they do, and God's presence continued as Darlene and her loved ones dealt with growing limits to her abilities. But she continued to do what she could do, and probably even more, with God by her side. And now she's completed her journey, and the God of compassion and comfort travels with us in our days of grief. In times like these, believers look to the Lord for comfort, and we pause in humble worship. For we have faith that the power of resurrection is stronger than the power of death. Let us pray. God of all times, you stretched out the skies, lighted the stars, scooped out the seas, and hammered out the hills. You create all things, and you hold all things and all people in your loving hand. Let those same hands of blessing rest upon those who mourn this day. Give the gift of faith and peace to sustain us in the valley of the shadow of death. Give us the hope that you, God, the creator of all that exists, also recreate to life anew, transforming even death into life eternal. Lord, supply us with your abiding love. <clears throat> the same love that sent your son Jesus to the cross, the same love that called him forth from the tomb into the light of the resurrection. By this faith, this peace, this hope, and this love, may all of us be sustained until we behold you face to face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> These 
words seem especially appropriate for today. The words of Jesus from Matthew 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 28, where we read, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come. Come to me. Come to me, you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Notice that Jesus does not say, Come to me and you will never feel pain again. For even for believers, personal pain is part of life. Physical suffering is part of life. Spiritual longing is part of life. Even relational brokenness is part of life. Grief and sorrow are part of life. Not all of us feel quite right with God all the time, but the invitation stands. Come. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Come, and I will give you rest. So let us rest in God's care as we remember Darlene and celebrate her life. As I explored with the family some possible scriptures to include in today's service, I learned of Darlene's fascination with eagles. I understand that she regularly observed their nesting habits via a nest camera providing live coverage on the internet. Here's a favorite scripture about eagles from Isaiah 40, verse 31. Those who wait <clears throat> for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I can almost imagine Darlene taking on those words, even now. Flying, running, walking. I understand that Darlene also enjoyed tending her garden, reminding us of this scripture from Matthew 6. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And gardeners learn to appreciate the beauty and the wonder of the growth of flowers. We turn now to Psalm 23 one of the most well-known of the psalms. And David wrote many beautiful psalms for worship. His life, however, was not all joy and singing. No one's life is. And David expressed that poignantly in Psalm 23, as he speaks of the need for a restored soul, of the times of walking in the valley of the shadow of death, as well as the realities of evil and enemies. And in the midst of all that, David speaks of his assurance of God's presence and providing in the difficult situations of life. He speaks out of a sure knowledge that God is with him in all the ups and downs. Please feel free to recite this psalm with me. I'll be using the King James Version since that's the one most people have memorized. But I won't be offended if you say it in a little bit different way that you've memorized, or even if you forget the words. If I know I would, they're here in front of me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, the Lord is our shepherd. There for us when we need renewal and restoration of our souls. That need for renewal and restoration is a common need of human souls. Because of the stresses and strains of life that wear on all of us, we need places and activities that nurture us. David was a shepherd. And I believe he was renewed with his sheep in those green pastures and by those still waters. Think for a moment. Where did Darlene find her renewal and restoration? Perhaps she found it in her gardening, in her cooking, maybe even in shopping and browsing the internet. God gifts us with our own unique spaces for renewal. So let us draw strength from them in our times of need, times of <coughs> peace, when our hearts feel a deep sense of loss. The Lord is our shepherd, present when we walk through valleys of shadow. Valleys, too, are part of human experience. We all walk in places of darkness, danger and fear, questions, mysteries. Sometimes it feels like we're very alone in those places, but God helps us through. The Lord is our shepherd, with us when we must cope with realities of evil and enemies. Some that eyes can see, some that hide from sight in microscopic or spiritual realms. We cope with these realities every time we encounter the news of the day, and sometimes even more in the social media responses. Sometimes we may feel a direct personal threat. Other times we sense danger for loved ones or even compassion for folks we've never met. It's good to remember that God continues to protect and provide. In fact, God is always doing healing work in the world, in the midst of brokenness. And God is at work in the realms of heaven, preparing a table for all of us to gather around together. In Psalm 23, David spoke of his assurance of God's presence and providing in the ups and downs of life. He knew God's presence. Darlene, too, knew God's presence, and that helped her through the ups and downs of life. Through this psalm, we can also find reassurance of God's presence and providing in all the ups and downs of life. Chapter 14 of John's Gospel also offers hope as we cope with the reality of death. In the opening verses, Jesus is heard to speak words of comfort to his disciples as he prepares them for the day he would leave their presence. And he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's that word prepare again. Both Psalm 23 and John 14 encourage us to trust that God continues to provide for us and dwell with us even as we pass from this life into life eternal. The psalmist proclaimed, you prepare a table for me. Jesus promised, I go to prepare a place for you. 
May these words of scripture reassure us that Darlene is now in that place that God prepared for her eternal peace and joy. <coughs> when we pray the Lord's Prayer for our Father, we express our faith in God and God's kingdom. We voice our faith in God's providing. We acknowledge God's forgiveness and protection. And we remind ourselves once again that God is eternal. Feel free to join me in that special prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to a more focused sharing of memories and tributes. I met Darlene only once, about two weeks ago, soon after the Dragonfly Hospice team started coming into her home. At that time, she was very weak. Communication with her was difficult. So I got acquainted with her in conversation with Christine and her caregiver, Dora. Darlene did seem receptive to a time of hymn singing, scripture, and prayer. So most of what I know of Darlene comes from her obituary, and some of that was, was confirmed in our conversation. She was born on June 9, 1939, to Hilbert and Helen Tekentine in Mahaloy City, Pennsylvania, the graduate of high school there and McCann School of Business. I understand that she was a secretary for the Pennsylvania Department of Mines before becoming a typesetter, a typist, and stay-at-home mom for her three children. She enjoyed gardening, cooking, shopping, and browsing the internet. In addition to her parents, Darlene was predeceased by her husband of 48 years, Ralph Griffith, as well as her sisters. There were a lot of them, weren't there? Grace, Marge, Myrtle, Dorothy, and Helen, and her brother, George. She is survived by her three children, son Stephen, daughter Christine and husband Edson, and son Randall and partner Melissa. She's also survived by her sister Rose, brother Paul, and many nieces and nephews. I understand they would have loved to have traveled, but the weather was rather inclement some places. She will be deeply missed by family and friends. Her children asked me to read this, Message from Steve, Chris, and Randy. Thank you for coming today to celebrate the life of our loving mother, Darlene. Our mother was very humble and unassuming. You wouldn't, she wouldn't have wanted a big fuss made for her, nor would she want to see our tears and sadness at her passing. Mom came from difficult circumstances, the youngest of 10 children born into poverty. She had rheumatic fever as a child. She didn't let this adversity stop her. She started her career in Harrisburg, working as a secretary for the state, and eventually left the work world to be a stay-at-home mom. She wasn't intimidated by how technology changed. She transitioned from using a manual typewriter to an electric one. Then she used word processors and typesetting machines, eventually getting comfortable using the personal computer for the work she did at home. And in later years, she loved using the internet. She researched treasures on eBay, played music and watched animal videos, and live feeds from the Eagle's Nest cameras. Mom endured a lot of health struggles during her lifetime, and she kept those private. She didn't complain. She never wanted people to worry. Our mom was thoughtful and loving until the end. Even though she lost her ability to speak, it didn't stop her from taking care of those around her. She always made sure everyone had a drink 
and urged us to put more food on our plates. It became a nightly ritual for her to carry the ice cream cartons from the kitchen to the living room to offer us ice cream. She even treated her health care helpers like guests, offering them drinks and walking them to their cars when they left, waving goodbye. Words can hardly express how much we will miss her love and care in our lives. Following the internment at Indian Town Gap, the family would like to invite everyone to join them in celebration of Darlene's life at Harper's Tavern. Darlene will be remembered, at times expected and unexpected. Here's a poem about times of remembering those who've moved beyond this earthly life, written by Sylvan Commons and Rabbi Jack Reimer. At the rising of the sun and at its going down, we remember them. At the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. At the rustling of the leaves and the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are part of us as we remember them. When we're weary and need of strength, <coughs> they remember them. When we're lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. And when we have joy to share, <coughs> when we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. For as long as we live, they too shall live, for they are a part of us as we remember them. I hope you will continue to share your memories of Darlene with each other keeping her spirit alive in your midst. Let us pray. Oh God, you are present here. You sit or stand beside each person. When a hand touches another, or arms meet arms, or eyes look deeply into other eyes, or words are spoken, you are here. In a handshake, an embrace, a gaze, a voice. You are present here even if we're not sure, for nothing can separate us from you and your love. Yes, it is a time of absence. It's a time of questions, of tears, so help us to feel your presence. Accept our thoughts and feelings no matter what they are, and help us to accept our own thoughts and feelings. Lord, grant us the grace to live with our memories in ways that will help us. Give us the peace that knows there is hope on the other side of crying and separation. Give us your love as we let go of Darlene and walk through our grief. Lord, bless this family. Give to all of Darlene's loved ones and friends the blessing of your strength and your peace.